Hi Ravens, it's Maddie and I am back again with another wellness update. Um, so last time we checked in it was midterm season and we were trying to get through the month of October and somehow now it's suddenly December, um, which means that we're back and it's exam season. Um, so much like midterm season, it's a very busy time of the year, but it's also that point in the year where it's really only the two weeks keeping you from um, the winter holiday break, which is hard to find motivation sometimes to get through. But given that it is such an important time for success with school, I am back hopefully to share some tips as for what I'm doing to help get through, but also hopefully to inspire you to uh, embody some ways to maximize your wellness and success during this time. So without more of an intro, let's get into it. So hey there, we are in the kitchen um, and I guess we're gonna have a bit of like an MTV Cribs moment where I'm going to show you what I have in my fridge. Um, and I'm really just showing you this because nutrition is so important to um, fueling your brain and making sure that you are um, taking all the steps to really take care of you because health is such a full body thing, um, especially during seasons of high stress and when you are using your brain a lot. Um, but I'm not a fan of meal prepping on the basis that I just don't like eating the same food. Um, multiple days in a row, but I have kind of found a strategy that helps cut down on some of the kitchen time, but also um, helps to ensure that I'm either eating or that when I do eat that I'm making healthier choices and not leaning towards fast food, um, which sometimes becomes the easiest and most convenient option, but is also more expensive and less nutritional. Um, I will warn you that I did not prepare like you might in cribs. I have not cleaned my fridge out, but I will show you what's in it. So here is the big reveal. And you will see that I have lots of containers here and in them I have some fresh cuts, fruits and vegetables um, and things that are just easy to go so that when I don't super feel like spending lots of time cooking or getting a snack ready, there are easy and nutritional things on hand that require very little effort but ensure that I'm still eating properly and fueling my brain and my body. So you'll see here that I just have some pineapple, some lettuce that's cleaned and cut, um, some pomegranates, some cut up sweet potatoes, there's some cut rice, there's cut fruits and veggies in there just for veggies with dip. And these just provide me um, either the opportunity to make a really quick meal that is nice and incorporates all of the food groups um, or pick a healthier snack than leaning towards something um, that's pre-packaged but maybe not as nutritionally rich. Another really important tip for maintaining your wellness is making sure that you're giving yourself breaks. As much as school is a big priority right now, um, and obviously there's a lot of focus that needs to go into your studies and preparing for finals and take homes and whatever other responsibilities you may have at this time, um, it's really easy to get burnt out. And once you're burnt out, especially this time of year, it's really hard to recover. So making sure that you're taking little breaks to um, just make sure that you're doing things for you um, that are separate from school and kind of just help you to recharge and refresh as you kind of shift your brain back to doing something academic or school related. Um, so given that it's the holiday season and I always um, feel a little conflicted about it being, um, you know, the holidays, but also a time that's really busy with school and studying, um, I decided to take a break and decorate this little gingerbread house. Um, it was an inexpensive way to kind of do something creative with my hands, um, kind of shut my brain off at school for a little bit um, and practice um, a little self-care because it just got me a little more on the holiday season than I was when I started. So another tip that I have actually has to do with your bed. So um, we're here in my room. I'm really giving you the full behind the scenes tour of this vlog, um, but I am a terrible room studier um, in any situation, but I also find that when I make my bed and I start my day by making my bed, um, it kind of ensures that I won't get back in it because I know it's so easy when your bed is unmade to just, you know, figure you're gonna do your readings in your bed or um, you're going to, you know, send some emails or do whatever you may need to do from the comfort of your bed. Uh, but this is definitely not one of the more productive locations um, to, to do your schoolwork. So starting your day with a nice clean and made bed is a great way to kind of ensure that um, you don't crawl back in it. So one of the greatest challenges that I find with exam season is that um, that kind of sense of normalcy with schedules um, and routine kind of go out the window a little bit because you don't have classes to keep you as regulated as you do during the school year. Um, so I still am working two jobs, which um, has commitments and are things that I need to accomplish, but I have a lot more flexibility in my schedule because I no longer have classes. 
Um, so I have scheduled all of my different stuff for work throughout the day, um, more so in the morning because I find that if I make commitments where I need to be somewhere or I need to do something for somebody else, I will be better at honoring that commitment and starting my day on a productive note rather than if it's um, starting my day studying because I will allow myself to hit snooze and sleep in for 30 minutes longer um, or push it for something that is more favorable. And then you'll see here that I've actually scheduled in my studying and I've done this in two or three hour blocks um, on the basis that I tend to be more productive in the evening. So these are better times for me to study. Um, there's less distraction I find. And then I've also broken it down into um, what I'm planning to cover in each of those three hour blocks. Um, just ensuring that I've covered all of the course content and that I'm putting myself in a good position. Um, I've also included here some of the review sessions that my TA is very nicely um, hosting, just because I think that a big part of getting through exam season two is really making sure that you're making use of the resources and the things that are available to kind of help you be um, as successful as possible. And then you'll also see in here too that I have scheduled in some time for fun. So I am allowing myself to um, have dinner at a friend's house um, to kind of take a break from studying. And I'm getting a massage because that makes me feel good and that is important to me. So another thing that I just wanted to show you is an app that I use um, called Self Control for when I need to use devices like my laptop to um, complete my schoolwork, but I get very easily distracted. I will say that I am terrible at telling myself that I'm going to watch one funny YouTube video or, you know, just look at one quick thing and then suddenly it's an hour later and I'm down some dark rabbit hole and I have not accomplished what I intend to accomplish and then I'm just stressed and overwhelmed and still have a to-do list. Um, so this is really great um, because it lets you access uh, devices that you have allowed and then once you set a timer you um, can't actually get into the website or the app that you have told yourself you can't use um, so I will warn you that once that timer is set you can't get out of it so be very mindful with the timelines that you set and how realistic you're being um, but it's really great if you need a little bit of help because you cannot um, manage your time as effectively on your own um, as you wish you would, which some of us suffer from, like myself. So another thing um, that in terms of all of my wellness, but especially with exams, um, is something that I, ch or I struggle with is um, having my phone. I use my phone far too frequently. I'm way too reliant on my phone um, and it does distract from my studies and I recognize that. So I'm trying to be more proactive um, both during this exam season, but also in my life as a whole, at kind of stepping away from devices and being a little less reliant on my phone. Um, and so one of the ways that I'm doing that is with Apple tracking my screen time. Um, I have set it up so that features like Instagram, I only allow myself um, a limited amount of time on um, every day. And that kind of helps to um, keep myself um, off of those apps that are very good for wasting time, um, but not so great for productivity. Um, and so I also then try to tell myself that I don't need to allow um, another minute or swipe away that notification, um, which is a separate thing, but it's something that I'm working on. Um, but I think that it's really important too, where I was doing some research and I found some really interesting stuff about even just having your phone on your person, even if you have it on, do not disturb. Um, or you have it set so that you are only receiving certain notifications. There's actually some really compelling evidence suggesting that even just having your phone on you um, takes away from your studies and it can actually um, induce an anxiety because we're so reliant on our phones um, that even just the fear of you not receiving a notification immediately because your do not disturb is on um, or the fact that you could be missing out on something as a whole uh, distracts from your studies. So they actually recommend um, in this one study that I read, that students don't even take their phones with them to their sites of study and that they leave it in their rooms to try to separate um, sleep and study or, you know, lifestyle and study, um, just to try to remove all of those distractions. Um, and it's interesting, too, just some of the research about the emotional state of having technology on your person. So um, it might also be worth considering that on your way to an exam, you consider leaving your phone even at home. I know it's hard and I know we're so reliant on our phones. I'm like definitely guilty of that. Um, but I think that I'm really going to try to leave my exam or sorry, my phone at home during exams. Um, just so that I don't have it on me to kind of um, hopefully boost my success a little bit more by not having 
um, the stress of knowing that I have my phone on me, but I can't access it. Um, yeah, and I think if that's something that maybe you aren't comfortable doing yet, consider downloading some of the apps. Um, there's a whole host of them in both the Android and the um, Apple uh, app stores um, where you can kind of limit your notifications or set to-do lists or kind of um, manage your use of apps just to make sure that you're really maximizing your study time and not getting sucked into the technology dark hole. So there you have it. Those are some of the small things that I'm doing um, on top of um, just making sure that I'm really prioritizing my nutrition and my time management. I'm also keeping up with my yoga and my running that I kind of talked about um, in my midterm vlog. Um, so I'm still making sure that I do that. It wasn't actually scheduled into my calendar and you definitely should do that to make sure that it happens. Um, but I'm still making sure that I'm prioritizing at least 30 minutes of physical activity a day just to kind of take that break, um, get my muscles moving, uh, some of that blood flowing and make sure that I'm kind of shutting my brain off but also fueling my body in other ways. Um, so I hope that this has given you some pretty easy suggestions for ways that you can prioritize your wellness and some strategies to kind of help manage um, some of the things that are hard to do during exam season um, and make it a little bit easier. I am wishing you all the best in your exams and a safe and happy um, winter break and we will see you in the new year. Bye!